Good morning, this is Dan Bomay again. Today's scripture in the Yeshua sermons is again on Matthew 5. This one's on, it says, Blessed or happy are you if you're persecuted for righteousness' sake, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Persecution. Oftentimes we get a little bit of trouble in our life and we're going like, I'm being persecuted. Gays claim to be persecuted. Muslims claim to be persecuted. Anytime anybody disagrees in our politically correct world, the person who's being hammered on declares it as being persecuted. Now, sometimes in the choice of words that people pick one to another, it pretty well could be close to persecution. We can tell somebody that they're wrong. We can do so because we feel that it's wrong. Or we can do so because of certain aspects of writings, thoughts, and ideals vis-a-vis -vis religious beliefs that they're wrong. But to ultimately go after, belittle, demean, demoralize, simply because you don't agree with something, is also tantamount to wrong and is persecution. To actively go out and attack, to be... Um, harshly sought after to be attacked in all forms. In a sense, the way the mass crowds are going after Donald Trump is a form of persecution. Indeed, his rights and freedoms are being restricted in the United States and the very fact that American citizens allowing any side, either side, to, to go on this type of behavior reminds us of the old 1600, 1700 political brows that used to take place. And there's a sense of excitement. Our side triumphed. We were righteous. We were overcome. No. You are brute. You are a bully. You are unrighteous people. And that needs to repent. And people who talk about their rights in the United States of America need to understand that there's a certain lying individual type of groundswell that is coming up that wish to exterminate every one of your rights and freedoms and needs to be curtailed. But what kind of persecution am I talking about? Political persecution? Religious persecution? Bible doesn't mention these things. It says, when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. What is righteousness? I'm right. You're wrong. Therefore, I'm righteous. Not at all. You do not have to be right to be righteous. Nor has it being righteous anything to do without being right. A righteous man can be wrong. <clears throat> but he will have the ability to say, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I didn't have my facts together. Oh, <gasps> facts. Righteous man just simply doesn't. It's a concept, it's an attribute of being a justified individual or having your actions justified. We don't just fly off and become individuals because we hear something. That's it. We're going to take it. You're right. Let's get to the streets. Let's uh, have a revolution. Let's take up our guns. Let's shoot each other. Let's uh, overthrow the establishment. That's not righteous, man. That is also brute force. That's a matter of being right. Righteousness listens to both sides of the argument. Does not allow your value system, whether you believe in something or not believe in something, to overcome your emotion. Even when debates take place and the argument of whether it's right to be gay, I am very quick and careful to pick my words. I don't, do not agree with the gay or homosexual lifestyle. I don't. 
And if my homosexual friends or those which practice that type of behavior or lifestyle wish to not accept that, that's perfectly fine. I allow them to live the way they wish. Don't hunt them out. I don't drag them out into the streets. I don't beat them. I don't cut them up. I don't behead them. I don't look after them. I leave that to the Muslims. Righteous man takes the thought and the idea and weighs out. Is it righteous behavior? Realistically, tell you the truth, righteousness has got nothing to do with behavior. Tyndale chose the word ri- ri- um, right world. An ancient, um, I believe it's Anglo-Saxon, to translate into righteous, wise, or righteousness, or righteous, um, right, right ways, or uh, right ways. Having our, not just talking about what is right, but taking what we feel is right and implying it in life. And sometimes that's the the struggle of life, isn't it? The Hebrew word is zedek. And it appears about 500 times in the Bible. The word righteousness. Proverbs 10, 11 says, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. A wise man just doesn't spurt off the first thing that comes in his head. He may ask, or she may ask, in the case of a woman, because you're a woman doesn't mean that you're not a righteous individual or person too. It says that the mouth of righteousness, of a right one, is a fountain of life. Whether you are male or female, you may ask for the time needed to think it out. Choose your words. Psalm 37 verse 30 talks about how the mouth of the righteous utter wisdom. We just don't talk out of the size of our mouth. We do the history check, the background, whatever work. We listen to both sides. We hum, we haul, we think, and then we speak. Because we take that time, even when sometimes our words may not agree with particular individuals because somebody is going to get their nose snap when you ask, a righteous man to step in and adjudicate, am I right or is he right? If you're asking for a point of who is right, the wise man takes time, listens to the counsel of both individuals, parties, or situation, investigates it out, does the history, does the background work, what caused his thought, why do you get it from, are you a Baptist, are you Pentecost, are you Catholic? And takes that all into account. Are you even atheistic? Whether or not the thought and idea the individual sometimes doesn't even agree with, a righteous man will make a ruling and say, if I was to say, based on the facts that I have found, this is what I deem as being right and true and just. Proverbs teaches us that from the mouths of uh, it, 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 or sorry, Psalms, the book of Psalms is a journal of the words of righteousness. It captures the right words, the, the thought and intent, of what it means to be righteous. You want to be a righteous individual, whether you're male or female. You will constantly refer back to the book of Psalms. The thoughts and intents in the heart of what a righteous man or woman is all about, is in turn, is all engraved there for the people to see. It is a record of the spirit man. It goes beyond that of flesh and blood and lays aside all the trappings of mortality and extends into the boundaries of being immortal. The thought and idea of how treating each individual, how they want to be treated. Oh, you may not agree. And oh, you may not always appreciate the words of a righteous person. But you will know when you hear the words, the soft words, 
the spoken words, the gentle words of righteous individual. It expresses the intent of the law. And by law, I refer to the scriptures. Not necessarily man's law, because many of man's laws today are not just. They are not fair. They're not even righteous. It is the um, right way to view life, the intent of thought. We are happy to be just, not to be right. We are happy to be righteous. So when you're persecuted in today's world for being a righteous individual, take into account that the world has no intent of allowing a righteous person to live. They're into the me, I, and self mode. And if you want true justice, that is not the mode one needs to be in. Now let's put aside the trappings of religiosity and place on the garments of righteousness and lift up the spirit of praise. Holy hands, sedic hands, the set apart hands need to be the ones that people turn to. We are happy when we reconcile two brothers together, whether or not we agree with them. That's beside the point. If any member of the Sanhedrin are watching this, share this to all the members of the Sanhedrin. These are the words of a righteous man. When we get together, if we ever get our acts together, you need to come into council. You need to be there. You claim to be Torah teachers. You need to be here for the people. Agreeing to disagree is a valid stand. Setting apart our own self, let us raise up the standard of the Most High God. Till next time, this is Dan Bome saying Shalom. Muslim Paul.